What's up, Legion? It's killing time. Thank you very much for stopping and checking out the video. So, I've been waiting to start this for a long time. I am at my storage unit. We're live. I actually had my first good week in garage sales so far this year for video game finds. So, if you guys want to check out the video, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I got some cool shit to show you. So, welcome to episode one of my garage sales retro video game finds. What's up, Cody Baker? How you doing? IFAX, how's it going? OPM Yurts fan, how you been, man? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping in, everybody. Skittle Lills, what's up? John, Jazz, Lover, how you doing, man? So, guys, this is our storage unit behind me. This big unit's mine. I have a cart full of goodies right here that I picked up today. Let's unbox this shit. What do you think? Yeah, it has been a long time. It has been. What's up, Braden? So, let's get the lock off this bad boy. Pop her open real quick. Right, I'm going to take the camera off my face, guys, so that we can... Uh, i got to learn how to take this. I can't remember. I remember you, Sam Broke. I remember you, dude. I actually know I like The Last of Us, man. Heck yeah. Okay, I think this is how we switch our camera. Okay, so this is my cart full of goodies. I acquired all this today. I'm not going to get into sp specific prices too much. But hey, let's unbox this shit, all right? This is my unit. I've been collecting this stuff for quite some time. This is only one unit. I have another unit that's completely and totally full of stuff elsewhere. But this is all stuff that I've been collecting. This is the type of stuff that I'm into. I have a lot of it, as you can see. All right, but enough of that. Let's go to today's finds. All right, so this first box here, pop this open. This guy had $3 written on this box. There's an original Xbox in here. I actually did get that somewhere else. It's a little dusty. I got to clean it up. But person said, give me five bucks and take it. So first console we got on the stream is an original Xbox. Just take that out and set it over here. So I picked up this original Xbox today. Last night, I was out doing some sales on Friday. And I actually picked up a Sega Master System with some games. That's the first Sega that came out. Has a neat little gun with it. Here's the system. For you youngins, this stuff probably doesn't even look like it's real to you because video game consoles just don't look like this anymore. We got a Sega Master System. I did pick up an original Nintendo yesterday as well. So this is the boring stuff. Let's get it out of the way. So this box here... Paid three dollars for the box, and basically all it is is old 1980s GI Joe vehicles, tanks. You know, three dollars for an entire box. I'm an investor. Stuff like this actually is pretty popular and does cost a little bit. So I said, "You want three dollars for the whole box, dude?" He's like, "Yeah, give me three bucks and get it out of here." Old school GI Joe stuff. So I grabbed all this. This is the boring stuff, guys. Bear with me. I just um, I wanted to get the boring stuff out of the way first. You know what I mean? That's a pretty big ship. It's actually kind of cool. This stuff is all strictly for my eBay. It's going to go on my eBay because I'm not a G.I. Joe collector. I mean, I'm a fan. I like G.I. Joe, but you know, I'm not a kid anymore. And this stuff's pretty valuable, and, and people on eBay really like it, so... Figure I can make somebody's day by selling all this pretty nifty G.I. Joe stuff that I found. It's cool. How's it going, Skittle Lills? Thanks for stopping in. Katie, what's up? So as you guys can see, there's just a whole bunch, a whole bunch of vehicles. G.I. Joe stuff. There's missiles, guns, all kinds of stuff. All right, so enough of that. Let's put this back. Get this in the storage unit. Let's get on to the important stuff. I don't have a stand or I would have just kind of like set my phone up, but the view from inside the storage unit is kind of dark. I figured that wouldn't really have been the best move anyhow. So just kind of shove that in there. All right, on to the games. Do not get confused. This is not Pampers, although it may look like it. All right, it's 
start off, I picked up a couple Wii games, Link's Crossbow Training. This is just crap, you know. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I did not pay $5 for that. I paid a buck for it. 25th anniversary collector's edition of Super Mario Brothers. And here we go. Retro. We have an original Nintendo in here. If you're familiar with the original Nintendo. This is an original Nintendo. These came out in 1985. First model. These were really, really fun. Super Mario Brothers, Final Fantasy, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Mega Man, Castlevania. So that's original Nintendo. Controller. Gun. A whole bunch of wires and shit. Then we also have a Nintendo 64 in here. Some of you guys might be familiar with this because this was a mid-90s console. It's not super old. But this is our mid-90s Nintendo 64 console. A lot of fun games on that. Picked up a couple Sega Genesis games. Mortal Kombat 2. Street Fighter 2. Super Champions Edition. A couple little fun Genesis games I picked up. This was the 64 controller right here. Check that bad boy out. It's got three prongs on the end of it. Your joystick to, for your movement. Look at all the buttons on this bad boy. Controllers nowadays don't even have that many buttons. This was a 64 back in 96. I mean, that's a lot of buttons. All right, so that's our second original Nintendo console. I got one yesterday, as I said, the same exact thing as I just showed you there. All right, so there's that box. We're getting to the better stuff. You see these two blue totes? Those two blue totes is where it's at. All right, but we're saving that stuff for last. Okay. Another game I picked up individual for the Sega Genesis it's called Road Rash. It's a motorcycle fighting game. You're racing, but at the same time trying to beat the holy hell out of the people that you're racing against. So that's quite a fun game. That's what Sega Genesis games look like when they came brand new in the case. All right, and then we've got, I paid $5 for this. All right. This here is an original Nintendo DS console. Handheld console. You guys are probably familiar with the DS. It's still out there. But this is the first one. This thing's like over 10 years old. All right, it's red. They came in a few different colors. I paid five bucks for this. Came with the charger. They came with two really awesome games. Pokemon Diamond and Kingdom Hearts. So, Nintendo DS. Some of you guys probably actually have some of these. They got the 3DS out now, which is just like a newer variation of the handheld console. It's the newest one released. I also picked up a blue original DS, this one here. They had a Pokemon game in it. Pokemon Leaf Green. Two different color original Nintendo DS consoles. That one's still on. I gotta shut that bad boy off. All right, so there's two retro DSs, the first DS that they released. Let's throw that in. All right, we're getting down there. We're getting down there to the goodies. This is another box of random stuff I just kind of threw together as I picked it up. A couple Wii games for any of you Yu-Gi-Oh fans. Believe it or not, I paid a dollar for this game. This game is actually worth quite a bit of money. I was shocked when I looked it up. Yu-Gi-Oh Wheelie Breakers for the Wii. I got two copies of the Super Mario Duck Hunt. This is an original Nintendo game for that Nintendo I just showed you a few minutes ago. Super Mario Duck Hunt. You use the gun on this game to shoot the ducks. Got two copies of that. Kingdom Hearts 2 for PlayStation 2. Nice little valuable game. I know you guys are familiar with Kingdom Hearts because I still make them on the new consoles. Got a little Wii controller. I paid a quarter for that. People just take it. Give me a quarter for it. Another DS. I opened this one up. I was kind of surprised to see what was inside here. Set the phone down for a second. So I can open the bad boy. So I opened this up and I gave her 10 bucks for it. There's a Super Mario 3 for Game Boy in there. I'm like, holy crap, there's a lot of games in this thing. Mario Kart DS. Kingdom Hearts for the DS. These are all, you know, they're not cheap games. This is a Nintendo DS Lite. This is like the second console that the DS released. I was surprised at how good a condition the thing was in. It's got a couple stickers on it and stuff, but I got the charger with it and everything overall. Really good shape. It's a neat little system. It's like a flip phone, you know. These are online capable. And then I open this thing up and there's a whole bunch more games in here. You know, some of them are pointless. This one has some board games on it. Battleship, Sorry, Trouble, Connect 4. 
There's a Guitar Hero game in there. There's a Batman game in there. Harry Potter, Sonic, a Sims game. So, I mean, it's all just, you know, extra stuff. Pirates of the Caribbean. So we got all that for 10 bucks. Anyhow. I know this box is probably kind of boring, huh? It's all right, because you know what? I'm about value and deals. And uh, this right here for 10 bucks was a steal. So that's our D, uh, Nintendo Lite DS. Nintendo DS Lite. I picked up some old G.I. Joes. Guy had these for 10 cents a piece. I just grabbed all of them for the hell of it. Whole bunch of G.I. Joes. Some other little action figures. I know you guys know G.I. Joes. They still make them. Not like these ones. These are like the very first. You know, I figured I could put these with the machines that I got today because I got them from a different sale. Put them with the machines and sell them on eBay. So, a couple of these might be Star Wars guys. I'm not really sure. But I picked those up. Real old dude. He looks like he's from like the 60s or some shit. All right, we got a PlayStation 1. If you guys haven't seen PlayStation 1, if you're, if this is before your time, this is what the very first PlayStation looked like. It was actually really a really cool, really awesome system. I liked it very much. It had some problems, but overall the system was pretty good. You just pop the top open, your disc goes in there, close your top, power on, bang. And it would load up with the Sony. Got some games for it. Nothing great, but these are what the PlayStation 1 games were. They were in like a CD case. Star Wars. Shrek. Atari Universe, which is some old Atari games. Pac-Man. SpongeBob. Lilo and Stitch. Here's your PS1 controller. So this is what the PlayStation controllers have evolved from. This is the first analog controller that Sony PlayStation ever made. It's very similar to the ones that they make now, for, even for your PS4. But these are the original controllers right here. You know, they got all your same buttons, your triangle, your square, your X, and your circle. Two analog sticks, your select and your start, and your D-pad. Then you got your top, R1, L1, R2, L2. That's all that. All right, so that box is out of the way. Let's move it along. Sorry if it keeps getting dark a little bit, guys, but I uh, am going in the unit. The unit does not have lighting in it. The, the light that you get here is from the hallway. That's why we don't have any light once we walk inside the unit to put a box in. So I have briefly looked at this stuff before I showed you guys, but not enough to actually know what this entire package entails. I do know that I'm not going to get into exact prices, like I said, for everything, but I do not pay much of this stuff. This is a box PS3, Cabela's Dangerous Hunts. Comes with a gun in a game. I did not pay $30 for that. I actually paid $20. And it came with this boxed 500 gigabyte PS3 Slim console. So I paid 20 bucks for that boxed PS3 Slim console, 500 gigabyte, with the Cabela's Dangerous Hunts hunting game in the box with a gun. So I've got another PS3. Probably got five of them now. But if the price is right, why not, right? So we'll throw that in here on that desk. All right, guys, we're almost down to the good stuff. I got one really good item at the end of the stream that I'm going to show from my truck because it's going home with me. Braden, this is my retro video game stream, dude. This is my first retro video game garage sale find stream. All right, I said I was going to do this. I know some people are interested. I see there's about 12 of us in here. So this is another original Nintendo that I picked up today. Same thing that I showed you earlier. But these things are worth some money, and if the price is right, I got to clean it up a little bit. But it's in good shape overall. I take these all day long, every day. Let's get that out of the way. Look what we got left. We got one bag, which isn't very interesting. And then we got two totes that are quite interesting. So let's get to this bag quick. Like I said, I'm saving the best item for last. We're going to go back to the truck after I close up the storage unit. And I'm going to show you guys the last item. Give me a second. I got to set you down for a second so I can open this bag. I don't know why comments aren't popping up, guys. I don't know if you guys are just watching and not talking or not, but the comments have stopped, so if you're chatting, that's why I'm not responding. All right, so I went to this sale, and this lady around my age had, like, a ton of DVDs on the ground on a tarp. She said, I want a quarter for anything. Anything in her sale was a quarter. So I was like, well, all right. You know, I'm not a huge Family Guy fan, but my brother is, and, I mean, I can make some money off of these. You know what I'm saying? So loads of Okay, guys, I'll try and catch up on that chat. Um, I'm not really seeing it right now. I don't know why it's not advancing. 
I do apologize for that. It's only showing the first few comments of the stream. But I picked up these Family Guy DVDs. And uh, I'm going to go home and live stream in a little bit. If you guys want to ask some questions about this video when I live stream a game in a little while, you can do that as well. But every single one of these seasons, South Park, Family Guy, I paid a quarter a piece for all these seasons. But like I said, I'm a bargain hunter. The lady said a quarter for anything at my sale. I started filling up bags. So I grabbed all the Family Guy and South Park DVD sets for a quarter a piece. I got Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story, the movie. I got a season of American Dad, Volume 1. I mean, all this stuff. A quarter. Family Guy, Volume 7. I picked up this video game related DVD, Sonic Underground. If any of you guys are into Sonic. Another Family Guy, a quarter for all that. I paid like $3 for everything in the I'm a big collector of like Super Mario and various Nintendo related toys and stuff. I found this guy for a quarter. That's Bowser. I got this big Ninja Turtle Donatello. These things are like $25 at the store, man. I got him for a quarter. I was like, well, shit, I'll take him for a quarter. All right, so that, I'm gonna set you down for 30 seconds. I gotta put this stuff back in the bag and put it in the unit. And then we're gonna open up the treasures of the day. This was just the decent stuff. Everything I buy, there's no garbage. Everything is decent at a really decent price. But every week, I find some stuff that's better than others. All right, so. We're going to throw this bag in. There's our box of G.I. Joe stuff with some of the game stuff. I'm going to reorganize this stuff after I end the stream. I just kind of wanted to get it off the cart for now. But like I said, I'm big into this stuff. This is all this all this stuff I found at garage sales. This is all. This here is just going to go on eBay. Yeah, it's a Barbie Super Corvette, but it's from like 1970-something. It's in the box. I paid a dollar for that, guys. You know what I'm saying? I'll put that on eBay. It'll be the cheapest one on there, and it'll go out the door in a second. All right. Atari Flashback. I got this giant Pikachu last week. I got a giant Spyro up there. I got a bunch of these giant action figures. I think this dude right here is like a Batman with the feet hanging out. All that type of shit, man. I'd be buying it all. You know what I mean? All these totes. All these totes are all full of retro video game stuff. And like I said, I have a whole nother storage unit that I haven't even put on a video yet. So let's find a spot for this bag. Giant Ninja Turtles. I mean, giant Ninja Turtles. Those bad boys were like five feet tall, four or five feet tall. I got Leonardo Michelangelo. Those were actually Christmas gifts. I picked this M&M guy up last week for $2. He's like a store display that you put candy in to sell candy. I bought him for my business when I open up. Two bucks. Starting to get some furniture gathered for my store. I got some guitars, you know, all kinds of neat crap, man. This is all the stuff I buy. That right there is an odyssey. That is before my time. That is an old video game console. There. Okay. So, without further delay, look what's left on the cart. I saved the best for last. The very best is actually in the truck. It's only one item, but it's amazing. I'll show it to you when we get done. So here we go. You guys ready? Drum roll. Let's check out what we got inside these bins. Shall we? What da All right. So what you're seeing here is a whole bunch of original Nintendo, Super Nintendo stuff in this crate here. These are the games that got the video game enterprise, the whole business basically on the market, man. Like Atari and ColecoVision and Television came before this stuff, but they weren't nowhere near as popular or as dependable and reliable as these games. These games came out in the mid 80s or the early 90s and they still work today. Like you just got them out of the store. You know what I'm saying? We got Monopoly. I know you guys know about Monopoly. Super Mario All-Stars. All right, this game goes for a pretty penny. It's like a $30 game used on Amazon, eBay. This game has all three of the original Nintendo Mario games on it, one, two, and three. And it has a Super Nintendo Mario game on it as well, Super Mario All-Stars. All right. This right here, for your original Nintendo, they used to make these cleaning kits. It has that black cartridge inside the box that you see on the cover. You would stick that into your console and pull it in and out repeatedly with some uh, liquid on the inside of the cartridge to actually clean the inside of your Nintendo, as they show here. All right, so that's an NES cleaning kit in its original box. This type of stuff is not really around too much anymore. I mean, this was produced in 89, you know, 30 years ago, guys. So that's some old stuff right there. 
I got a book in this box right here. This is how to win at Super Mario Brothers, like the original Super Mario Brothers, that game I showed you guys a little while ago for the Nintendo. There's all kinds of neat stuff in this bin. This is what they call the zapper gun. This is your original Nintendo gun that you would aim at the screen and you would shoot targets. Nintendo zapper. There was actually two versions of this. I believe this is the later one. They were both pretty close, but the original one was gray. It was the same exact thing, but instead of orange and white, it was gray and white. Okay, and you guys heard of hacking. You guys know what hacking is, that fun stuff. This here is called the Game Genie. This is your superhero code book of video games, the video game enhancer. So the Game Genie book would come with a whole bunch of codes in it for various games. And you can see this thing kind of in shambles. I have a bunch of these though. But um, you open the thing up and it would have all your games in it with all these codes. Uh, this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here. And it would give you codes for like, you know, pick up 10 weapons, pick up 50 weapons. It depends on what game it is, but Super Mario Bros. you can get like infinite lives and, you know, super jump power and all this other stuff. So this is a Game Genie book. But in order to use the Game Genie book, you had to have the Game Genie. All right, this is the Game Genie. So what you would do is you would stick a cartridge on this. You take one of these Nintendo cartridges, you'd stick it on here like so. Okay. Put your game on, and then you would flip this around, and you would insert that into your console. It's how your Game Genie worked. You have your cartridge, your Game Genie, into the console, bang. So that's how you would enhance your games on your original Nintendo with your Game Genie. And this is actually another game that we picked up. Ninja Turtles. This is the first Ninja Turtles game made outside of an arcade that was on a console. This is the original Ninja Turtles. i got to tell you, the game's hard as hell. So once again, guys, I apologize. I can't respond to your comments, but hi to each and every one of you. Thank you very much for stopping in and checking out my first retro video game garage sales find live stream, episode one. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I know some people wanted to see this. This is Wheel of Fortune, the video game. Nintendo pretty much came out with almost every type of TV game show that there was. This is a fan favorite right here, man. I love this game, Battletoads. This is a badass game right here. If you have not seen this game and you're into retro, you need to try it out. Battletoads is some good stuff. Look, look it up on eBay or YouTube. This right here is the game that came with the original Nintendo when you purchased one. This is your Super Mario Duck Hunt. I showed you two copies of this already earlier in the video. I actually on three of them today. Starts. There's a dog at the bottom of the screen and a bunch of like bushes, and ducks fly up in the air out of the bushes and fly back and forth, and you got to shoot your zapper gun. That I showed you right there. And then when you shoot them, they fall to the ground and make a funny noise. That's how Duck Hunt was played. Super Mario 3. The highest selling original Nintendo game. Probably the most popular original Nintendo game that there was on the market. Very, very fun game. This is where Mario started, guys. I mean, they had a Mario Brothers game on Atari. But that was just like a one-screen battle. Where you and, you and another character would just throw hammers at each other and try and kill each other. When this Mario came out... That's when Mario really took off and became its own thing. Golf. I mean, these, these sports games are corny as hell for Nintendo. I'm not going to lie. There's only a couple good ones. Roadrunner. This is a third-party game made by Tengen, which means it's licensed by Nintendo, but it's not officially produced by Nintendo. This was a Japanese company called Tengen that actually produced this game, but it's playable on the Nintendo. There's many games that come in this color or like a yellow or a red that are made by a third-party company that are actually made for the Nintendo. So we got some Super Nintendo games in here. This is Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong is another game franchise that started exclusively on the original Nintendo. And at this point, now we're here on Super Nintendo with Donkey Kong Country 1. Anybody heard of Gauntlet? This is Gauntlet Part 2. That's for original Nintendo as well. Bigger cartridges are original Nintendo. The smaller ones are Super Nintendo. Tetris. This is actually Tetris Attack, which is like a third or fourth Tetris game. Super Nintendo. We got some Super Nintendo Soccer. Another version of Soccer for Super Nintendo. And these games, be it as old as they were, the Super Nintendo ones were actually pretty far advanced ahead of their time. This is Illusion of Gaia. This is one of my favorite games from Super Nintendo. This is an RPG similar to like a Zelda or a Final Fantasy. If you guys are RPG fans and you like retro games, check out Illusion of Gaia if you haven't played it. It's not that expensive, but the game is amazing. Really good game, Illusion of Gaia. This one could be worth some money. I got to look it up. It may not be worth anything. It may be 
or something. This is another one of those third-party games. It's called Joshua. It's one of those games based on the Bible. Looks like it was actually originally purchased at a church library in uh, the city that I went to the village wide in today. Looks like whoever purchased it years ago didn't move out of town and kept it with them. Ultimate Air Combat. This is like a simulator, flight simulator game. You're in a, in a helicopter or an airplane, basically just taking other choppers and stuff, trying to shoot them down. Donkey Kong Country 3, Super Nintendo. That's another version of a Donkey Kong Country game they came out with. There's actually three of them on the Super Nintendo. I have all three of them. Now, this here is kind of a treasure. This is Super Mario RPG. This game goes for about $50 by itself. It's a, it's a pretty cool, really well illuminated and illustrated game. Um, it's not your typical RPG. It's quite different. This is not like Zelda or Final Fantasy or any of those, but it's called an RPG for the fact that it has some RPG sides to the gameplay, but not a typical RPG. It's different, but it's a good game. We got like a little four-wheel drive off-road game for Super. Super Mario World. This is the one that was released with the Super Nintendo. When you got your Super Nintendo, chances are it came with Super Mario World. All right, so we're working down through this bin. I'm trying to be as fast with it as I can. Donkey Kong Country 2, Super Nintendo. So you've seen all three of them. They're just like a side-scrolling game. This here is a Super Game Boy. All right. Now what this does is this sticks into the top of your Super Nintendo because the Super Nintendo, the games go on the top of the console. And then you can put a Game Boy game, the little handheld Game Boy. You can put a Game Boy cartridge in here, stick this into your Super Nintendo, and then you can play your Game Boy games on your big TV with this bad boy right here. So for that reason, these things go for, for a significant price. I have a bunch of these, actually, because they were pretty common back in the day. But because of the fact that they play Game Boy games, this is actually pretty valuable. I've got some brochures and stuff from consoles. You know, this is an original Nintendo console book, the book that came in the box with it. Here's another original Nintendo. That's the fourth one that I showed on the screen. I acquired four of them. Same thing I've showed you earlier, so I won't waste a lot of time on it. And this is our Super Nintendo. All right, so you have power button, you have reset button, and this here, this ejects your game. So as I said, with the Super Nintendo, we got Mario Paint here. Your games go on the top. You just snap them in, okay? That's how your game goes in your Super Nintendo, then you power on. To get it out, you just and that ejects it for you. All right, so that's our Super Nintendo console. Very, very reliable system, very good system. This system came out in like 92, and it's great. All right, as we get to the bottom of the first tote, there's an Olympic Winter Games for Super Nintendo, McDonald's Kids for original Nintendo, Double Dragon. This is kind of like a side-scrolling, stage-by-stage Mortal Kombat Street Fighter type game. That original Nintendo made. There's actually three of them on the original Nintendo. Pretty good games. Batman Forever. I am Batman. You guys like Batman? Batman games started on original Nintendo. They continued on to Super Nintendo. And we're playing them on PS4 today. Another franchise that's been around a long time. So we get into the bottom of the first tote. We got some regular Xbox DVD remotes. I got a couple of them in there. This is your regular Xbox. If you guys have never seen it, where's my flashlight at? I got a little glare going on here. Okay, that there is an original Xbox. That's the first Xbox that ever came out. They were pretty good. Didn't have a red ring of death like the 360 did. Um, sometimes, you know, like any electronic that's computer based, like any Microsoft console, sometimes they would just burn out and stop working. But overall, the original Xbox was quite reliable, and I love how it's got the green dot in the center. You can see the giant X going across the system, you know, X box. So it's pretty cool how they actually set it up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this stuff back. We're going to get into the final tote. All right, and then on my way to the truck, I'm going to show you the best item that I found of the day which this is a lot of great stuff, I'm not going to lie. But I'm going to show you the best item I found of the day. It's a gold mine item, and it's one of my favorite pieces I have in my entire collection. And that's about five or so minutes away, so stick around if you want to see it. It's a very, very unique item. Some people may not understand, but those of you that are in the stream that were around for this retro video game stuff, 
When you see this item, you're gonna understand. All right, so that's tote number one. The better stuff is in the next tote. And I'm not saying that that's not good stuff there, but I go from least to best when I do my gaming stuff. All right, so one remains. One is left. This is the best of all. All right, so in here, as you can see on the top, we have a Tendo GameCube. I know a lot of you are familiar with that. That's an early 2000s console. 2003, I would say, around there, maybe a little earlier. Game Boy Advance pouch. Before Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, there was Game Boy. We had these little nifty pouches that you could store your Game Boy in. This here was called the Game Boy Advance. This is the first one that actually had a light with it. The original Game Boys didn't have a light in the screen. The developers weren't smart enough or weren't thinking about it enough to actually put a light in the screen. But this is your original Game Boy. This is the handheld console that people use when I was a kid. All right, these are developed by Nintendo, obviously. They came in multiple different colors. They run on batteries, or you can get a power cord for them. Okay, so that's Game Boy Advance. That's like the second Game Boy console that was released. Game Boy has like five variations. I can get this thing back in. This is in good shape, good shape, and I don't want to ruin it. So I'll make sure I get it back in there. Okay. Game Boy games look like this. Got a bunch of them. Just put them over on this tote here. These are what your Game Boy games look like. And these were, you can see how big they are in my hand. This is Contra. These were Game Boy games that go on that handheld console that I just showed you. I actually got a whole bunch of them in this little pouch here that came with all the stuff that I bought. There's approximately 20 or so games in here, I would say. So I hope that um, you guys that are in here to see the retro game stuff, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm going to try and do it every week, and naturally, when you do something the first time, it's new, and you don't really have a setup for it, you know? So every week, as I get ideas in my head, this is going to get a little better. But these are all old Game Boy games. Zeldas, Mario's, Castlevania, Adventure Island. There's a whole bunch of good stuff there. Here's our GameCube console. The GameCube console is very cool. It came with a handle on it. So if you want to just rock it like a jukebox or whatever, you can carry it down by your side. You know what I mean? It has four controller ports, two memory card slots. This is the console that played the little tiny discs in it. So you pop it open, your little disc goes in there, you close it, power button, reset button, eject button. That's our GameCube. I got about 10 or 15 of them probably. This here is a attachment for the Game Boy. It's like a little multi-tap. If you plug this into your Game Boy, there's three slots on the outside where three other Game Boys can be plugged into it. This was multiplayer gaming before multiplayer. You could have three of your friends hook their Game Boys up to yours, so you had four Game Boys connected. And you guys could play this racing game together, four of you, compete against each other. It's a neat little thing. I've got a few more PS1 games in here. We're going to skip over those. Storage unit closes up soon, so I want to make sure I get that in. This is a Game Boy Color. This is one of the other variations of the Game Boy that came out. This one's pretty neat because it's actually translucent. You can see through it. You can see the inside of what the console looks like. It's got a speaker for the sound naturally in the front bottom right corner. You can see the chip in there where all the data comes off, all the software comes off and everything. This uses batteries or a plug as well. Games pop in and out right here. It's a Final Fantasy game. So that's Game Boy Color. We have a, another Nintendo 64 console. Four plugs in the front. Your game sticks in the top. In this little gray slot, your game's going right there, just like the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo's older. This is the 64 came out after the Super Nintendo. And look at all the crap we got in here, man. This tote was heavy. I was like, holy shit. Donkey Kong 64, very popular Nintendo 64 game. Super Mario 64, this is the game that came with the Nintendo 64 when you bought it new. Every Nintendo console that was released came with a Mario game, even the GameCube. The GameCube came with Super Mario Sunshine, which I don't have in this video. Let's get some of these wires and stuff out of the way so we can get to the good stuff from the bottom of the bin. 
This is just all kinds of Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers, 64 controllers. The thing that was cool about the 64 is the controllers came in all different colors. There was see-through ones, there was all solid colors, there was all kinds of different crazy controllers for the 64, which is really neat, really unique. This is your GameCube controller. Another controller with a massive amount of buttons on it. GameCube had two, two joysticks. This one here and this little yellow one on the bottom, in the right corner. That's your GameCube controller. It only has two top buttons. Well, actually, there's three top buttons. There's one little one there. PlayStation 1 games. Now, this here is your very first Game Boy, all right? This is the very first Game Boy that ever came out. It's big. It's bulky. It's kind of ugly. This thing was released back in, like, 85. Very, very ugly. Now, this big contraption on the top of it, this is actually a light. Inside this screen, there's a light that you can plug in. So you could actually have light in your screen because this console did not have any light in it. People were forced to play the original Game Boy under a light. Otherwise, you could not see the game that you were playing. Who develops that, right? But once they started coming out with these accessories where you had a light and stuff, the console wasn't too bad. Black and white, though, no color. All right, so we're getting down near the end, guys, for today. Um, this was a very successful day for me, though. I did not spend a lot, and I got a ton of value. This is another variation of a Game Boy. This is called the Pocket. It's a smaller one, really designed to be able to walk around in your pocket or your backpack. So you could bring it to school, play it under your desk when your teacher wasn't paying attention, you know, and uh, have some fun. Turn the volume down. What are you doing, Scotty? Oh, nothing. Just looking at my book. Meanwhile, you're playing Super Mario Brothers Deathmatch on Game Boy Pocket. All right, 64 games. This is 007. One of my favorite games. Multiplayer basically took off on the Nintendo 64. That's where the idea really came from. This game and all other games on the 64 were offline but you could hook up four controllers to one console, and there was a variety of games on Nintendo 64 you could play four players consistently at the same time. This right here is one of the most popular ones. It's a four-player death match. Whatever TV screen you're on would split up into four sections. Everybody would have their own corner of the screen, and you would battle each other right there, sitting next to each other, all four of you, playing 007 GoldenEye. There was also Mario Party, Mario Kart, and some other games. I got a pretty good stack of Nintendo 64 games. So this one's called Hexen. I was not a big fan of it. It's not worth a total lot. But, hey. This is Zelda, Ocarina of Time. This is actually my favorite Zelda game in all. I love Zelda. It is my favorite video game franchise on the market. I own hundreds of Zelda games. I'm not even going to lie to you. I have a ton of them. But this game, Ocarina of Time for 64, was by far the best, in my opinion. I love it. Zelda, great game. This one here is a gem. This is the second best item I found on the day. Like I said, I did not pay a lot for this stuff. I paid what the person asked, and it was not a lot. This is a $100 game used on Amazon or eBay, minimum, $100. This is the first mature rated game that Nintendo released on the 64. It's called Conker's Bad Fur Day. There's a lot of cursing in it, a lot of sexual references. Very popular game. It's kind of hard to find. Perfect Dark, another great game if you haven't heard of it. It's kind of like a survival horror in the old days. Mario Kart, that was probably one of the most popular and most famous games on the 64 console. Four players in a battle royale racing game at the same time with Mario characters. StarCraft, have you guys heard of StarCraft? I think this was the first console version of StarCraft ever released. You might have to double check that because I'm not positive, but I don't believe it was on a console before the 64. This here is another gem. This is Zelda, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This game came out after the Ocarina of Time. It's very similar. Most of the map is the same as the Ocarina of Time map with different events. And this is actually a 3D holographic sticker. It's covered in plastic, as you can see. And the cartridge actually like shifts the picture when you move it in a certain direction. Link takes a different pose. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that gold cartridge is actually pretty rare and pretty valuable. This here is a freezer bag full of all the books 
Let's, from all the games that I've showed you in both of these totes. This is one collection that I bought off of one guy. He really took care of his stuff. He kept all his booklets and everything, which the booklets actually have some value to them, and they add value to the games. If you guys are enjoying the video and you want to see more of my garage sales fine retro video game live streams, please hit that like button for me. Let's smash that like button, see if we can get some extra views on this video. The more popular the videos are, the more I'm going to do these. It does take time and it does take work and energy. Hybrid Heaven, I'm not really too familiar with that one. So finishing up, guys, we got a few more 64 games. This is called Our Marines. It's on a black cartridge. One thing I liked about the 64s, they had games on all different color cartridges. If you guys are here with Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem games carry a little value. I got a couple different Duke Nukem games for the 64 today. There's not enough on a blue cartridge. Here's our other Duke Nukem. So these, you know, very, very cool, very good finds. I had a great week. This is actually a rumble pack for the Nintendo 64. The controllers didn't have a natural rumble or shake vibration function built into the controller. So after the system was released and Nintendo realized it had some imperfections, they came out with some money-making gambles like memory cards and rumble packs. This would stick into your controller and then would add the rumble feature to your controller sporting a three AA uh, or a AAA battery in this little contraption here might take two and then you could stick a memory card in that port so you have the rumble pack in your controller here a memory card here and your console is capable of doing everything that the nintendo had available to it you got a wireless this is a wireless gamecube controller it comes with a little port that i believe is in the box here in this tote plug that port in and you got a wireless gamecube controller so you could sit back 20 feet on your couch and play the games from your from your couch wireless xbox controller these are all just memory cards and wires there's even like some portable cd players and stuff in there the guy just didn't want to search for everything he was like dude just take it all so i don't know what you guys think about that but i'm going to quickly put this stuff back in the box we're going to close up our gold mine storage we're going to head to the truck and i'm going to show you my most prized possession from day some of you might laugh some of you that know what i have here are probably going to be pretty shocked to see what it is because it's pretty amazing that I actually stumbled on something like this in this day and age. It's about 40 years old. Just bear with me for about two minutes. We're going to finish up. I'm going to go home. I'm going to live stream some video games. I might start out with some uh, old school from 2013, Call of Duty Ghosts. If any of you are familiar with Call of Duty Ghosts, I play Search and Destroy. I was actually one of the top 100 players in the world on PS3 that game before I stopped playing PS3. I have not really played it much on PS4, but I'm starting to get good at it. I love the game. The graphics are old. The movements are old. Everything's kind of old, but the game's a lot of fun. So I'm going to go home, probably start out streaming with some Call of Duty Ghosts on PS3. If you guys want to come in that stream and talk to me about the retro game stream, all the questions and stuff you've been trying to ask that I can't see on the phone right now, I'll be glad to answer them. I guess that's down for just a second. So I can put these Game Boy games away. Now we're going to head to the truck. And we're going to take a look at the last item of the stream here. Just bear with me. Guys, I paid a very minor amount of money for this stuff. I mean, I spent a lot of money. But in compared to what this stuff's worth and what it sells for, I really didn't spend much. I paid probably about not even 10% the retail value for everything that I've shown you today. All right, sorry for blacking you out for a minute. I had to get that back in the tote. Let's put this in. Next time I come down to the unit, I'll reorganize this stuff. For now, we're just going to get this away so that we can go to the truck and show you the last item. So one time, this is one of my storage units. I have two. I've got some Furniture in here that I'm putting in my business someday. I'm not getting rid of these Ninja Turtles. They're four feet tall. They're for my permanent collection. A lot of stuff I'm keeping. But, hey, just a lot of retro game stuff. It's what I do. Sega Master System, Nintendo, PS3. You know, this is an old case with a bunch of original Nintendo games in it. That's a storage case that you used to store Nintendo games in. There's a lot of stuff you guys can't even see here. I got a Super Mario Connect right there. If you're familiar with Connects, they're like the new... The new uh, Legos. There's a Mario Kart racetrack in the box right there underneath the connects. I'm into all kinds of that stuff. That there underneath that X-Men action figure, that little mat, that's the track and field mat for the original Nintendo. Wrestling, old wrestlers, 
This is a original Nintendo in the original box inside this bag. I got this Black Ops 4 standee from GameStop a couple months back. You know, so this is what I do, guys. When I go garage sale, this is the type of stuff we look for. All right, let's shut this unit up. Let's head to the truck. This is the gold mine in here. Let's lock this bad boy up. Set the phone down for a second, guys. I'll be right back. All right, let's take a walk back down to the truck. Everything has been put in the storage unit. I'll reorganize it next time I come down. Down to the truck. There she is. Storage unit's about to close, so I gotta get out of here. All right. So last item, which I'm taking home with me, Put in a very safe location. In this little pouch under my seat here. All right, this is an original Nintendo game. This is called Final Fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is factory sealed. This is in its original packaging, including the little hook from the game store. This game came out in 1987. All right, it's an RPG. It's one of the most popular and famous games on the original Nintendo. This is the first Final Fantasy game ever made, and as you guys know, they're still making them today. All right, this is Final Fantasy for original Nintendo. Factory sealed, never open, doesn't have a tear in it. Look that baby up on eBay real quick. This is my most prized item I got on the day. Ian, we're gonna check this baby out and have some fun with it for a minute. Final Fantasy, factory sealed, original Nintendo. Check that bitch out on eBay, all right? This right here, is worth more than three times what I paid for everything I've showed you guys in this live stream. And I got this for a penny. All right, so that is my most prized addition to my permanent collection that I'm not going to open, I'm not gonna get rid of. It's gonna get put in a protective plastic case or a glass case and it's gonna go up on my game shelf. And eventually, maybe someday, it'll be in my stream in the background when I do face cam. All right, so Final Fantasy factory seal for original Nintendo, baby. Check it out on eBay. It's hard to find something like that these days, man. So that stays in here until I get home, take it in the house. So guys, that's it. That's it for now. Thank you very much for stopping in and checking out this retro video game Garage Sales Find live stream episode one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, don't be afraid to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more in the future, if you're new, subscribe to the channel. That way you can watch the videos when I post them. I'm going to try and post one every week. But naturally, if I don't find any good stuff, there ain't going to be a video. This week was awesome. If I have another week like this next week, there'll be another video. Just keep your eye out for more videos in the future. I'm going to jump in this truck. All right? I'm going to jump in this truck. My ass is going to go home, get on my PS4, start shooting some people or running from some Jasons or doing something badass. I'm ready to play some video games. It's been a long Friday and Saturday. It's been a fun Friday and Saturday, but I'm ready to get on my PlayStation. So hope to see you guys in about 15, 20 minutes tops. I'll be live on PS4. Stop in and hang out with me. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a blessed day. Thank you for your time. Time is our most valuable asset. It's one thing we have no control over. We cannot replace our time. And I'm just a normal dude like anybody else, as you all know. So thank you very much for spending your time with me. These guys got to close, so I got to get out of here. Be safe out there, everyone. The world's a crazy place. It only takes that one evil son of a bitch to ruin your life. Don't let it be you. Vroom, vroom time. <clears throat> watch your backs. Watch your friends' backs. Watch your family's backs. Make sure they got your back. I got your back. I know for damn sure the Legion's got mine. Thanks for chilling with killing time. I'm gonna back out and try not to run into this building on my way because I really don't feel like damaging my truck or paying their insurance to get their building repaired. All right, we're out so they can shut the door. I hope to see you guys in the PS4 live stream in a few minutes. We're gonna start with the Call of Duty Ghost with my clan member LMSA shoe. And uh, we'll take it from there. I'll see who wants to play some Friday or some Dead by Daylight or some Realm Royale or some World War Z or whatever. I'm going to game all evening, all night tonight. Dinner's out of the way. Everything's done. I'm driving home right now. It's only about a 10-minute ride. And then we're going to be live streaming some gaming. So I hope to see you guys there. Thanks to the Mod Squad for being here.
best in the business, baby. I'm very lucky, thankful, and fortunate to have you as always. Thank you for everything you guys do to make the streams awesome for me and everybody else. We appreciate you. Thank you to the Mod Squad. You know who you are. Silver Moon, Jake Ward, Friday, ENS, Big Mike Gaming, Lava Lamps, Skittle Lils, Impact Legacy, and the rest of the crew. I'm very lucky, thankful, and fortunate to have you. Thank you for everything you do. I don't want to get pulled over by the cops, guys, because I'm... Um, currently driving right now as we're uh, live streaming so I could get in a little bit of trouble so with that said I'm out baby I'll be back in a little bit with a game live stream stopping and hang out with me it's Saturday evening yo I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday and even better Sunday and I hope you stop in and hang out with me in my live stream because I'm about to go and play some games you heard how many times do I gotta say it come chill with me we gonna play some games hope to see you guys there be safe out there Thanks for your time. Mod Squad, love you. Love you guys. Legion, thanks for chilling with me. I appreciate you checking out my first episode of Retro Gaming Garage Sale Finds. Killing time. I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm killing time. And I'm out. Later, Legion.